Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So good to see everybody this morning. Great to have you all with us. We appreciate your crowding in to make room for everybody. We are family, and, uh, and we, like that, uh, we like that warmth. Our service continues on page 355 in the Maroon Book. The Maroon Book. Have the wrong bulletin. Can I see your bulletin? Thank you. Is that right there? Yep. <coughs> Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the first lesson. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God chose no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and do does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went above about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. 
But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. reading from 1 Corinthians. For the, if for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Then, at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when his hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to, de to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Christ. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other, with them, other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. Happy Easter. Easter. Thank you. (laughs) Why do you look for the living among the dead? I was 28 years old when I had my first midlife crisis. I know you laugh, but it was true. (laughs) I say first because I haven't had a second one and I'm hoping that's not gonna happen, but I'm only in my 40s, so I'm not really clear on that yet. I I don't wanna promise anything. But I I did, I I was 28, first midlife crisis, and there wasn't a good reason for it. My life was pretty good. I I was working um, for a government contractor, I was the youngest director they had ever had. Um, I actually could pay all of my own bills without calling my mother and asking for help. She was very excited about that. (laughs) Things were good. I even really liked my job. You know, when I got up and I went to work in the morning, I loved what I did. I loved the people that I worked with, the company was good. There was no good reason for me to have a crisis, so to speak. And yet, here I was. And the way it manifested itself is I would come home in the evening and make my macaroni and cheese and sit on the couch and I'd say, really? This is all it is? I had done the right things. I had gone to college. I had built this career. And this is what, you know, you spend your whole life working for. And then I got there and was like, wow. Not enough. It just wasn't enough. And I think that there are, there are a lot of times in life when this happens. You know, when we get a little bit older and we have our kids and we get so wrapped up in kids' schedules. They've got to go to sleep on time. They've got to eat on time. We've got to change diapers on time. When they get older, they've got sports schedules and school schedules and, and all those things that we have to keep track of. And we're so wrapped up in their happiness and their life and, and helping them to become wonderful human beings that we sort of forget who we are and we wake up one day and we look around and we say is this all there is and we find ourselves running on empty or maybe we're a little bit older and our our kids are grown and we've done such a great job because you know they they they're they're happy they're on their own they're paying their own bills we're very happy about that and we look at our spouse when the last one moves out and we say wow Is this all there is? And we find ourselves running on empty. Or maybe it's when we retire. 
We've been looking forward to retirement for the last 45 years. We've been saying how many times, oh, I can't do this now, I'll do that when I get to retirement. This needs to wait till retirement. And then retirement finally comes and we're so excited and we take a couple of trips, we play a lot of golf, then a lot more golf. But then it's like, really? This is all there is? And we find ourselves running on empty again and again and again. And we feel this emptiness deep within us that we can't explain, that throughout our life we've never really been, fig we've never been able to figure out how to fill it. So we start filling it with anything we can. We fill it with food and we overeat. We fill it with wine and we drink too much. We fill it with shopping and we spend our life acquiring stuff, stuff that we really don't need. Frankly, we don't even really want, but we've got to fill this, this void within us with something so we fill it with anything we can. We might work too much to the detriment of our relationships, and we just start grasping at straws, trying to figure out how to fill this void that is in us. And we find ourselves looking for the living among the dead. But deep in us, we all have this yearning, this hole that needs to be filled. We all know it because we try to fill it. What the yearning is that we sometimes don't figure out is a yearning for a relationship with our Creator. That is what we're striving for. We need God. And that, friends, is the only thing that will ever really fulfill us and fill that emptiness. Now, some of you here might be thinking, well, I sort of tried that God thing. Well, at least I tried church. You know, I come on Christmas and Easter, but that's about it. But I'm, I believe in God. God is a part of my life. You're not alone if you're thinking that. 70% of Americans say that they are uh, a part of the denomination of their youth. Almost as many, 65% of Americans say that God is important to them in their life. Now listen to this. 17.7% .7 of Americans are sitting in a pew on any given Sunday. 17.7%. .7 there is a disconnect between what we, who we say we are what we say we believe, and at least how we practice it regularly. So there's something about church that has been a problem, maybe for some of us, maybe for some people that we know. We might have friends that we know that are good people, that say they're Christian people, but they don't go to church. It might be because they've been hurt by the church. The church, in outside society, if we're really honest with ourselves, does not exactly have the best reputation. We are known as ignorant, judgmental, misogynistic, and homophobic. If we're really honest with ourselves, we know that's what people say about us. People get hurt because when they come to church or the church of their youth, they find that the things that they believe about God is not really what the church believes about God, and it becomes a problem at some point. What they think is, is right isn't what the church thinks is right. Just for an example, in, nor in outside society, we have spent decades telling our daughters that they can do and be anything they want to be. And yet, in so many places, when you come to church, there's not a woman in leadership to be found. And yet, there might be a place that's different. What if there was a place that's different? What if there is a place that the church, where the church doesn't tell you what you have to believe in order to be a part of it? 
You are free to worship God in however you understand God, and we'd like to figure out who God is together. Where nobody thinks they know more than you or less than you, that everybody is just accepted just the way they are, who they are. Come what may, no matter what your background, what you've done, what you haven't done, it doesn't matter. You, everybody's welcome. There is a church like that, and this is that church. And so many people need to know it because so many people have this void way down deep inside them that needs to be filled, and they're trying to fill it with all of this other stuff that is never going to provide them the fulfillment that they need. They need to be here. We need to be here. We here at St. Matthew's have one message for every person that comes through that door. And it is the same message for everyone. And that message is that God loves you, period. There aren't any qualifications or, ca or caveats. God loves you. And it doesn't matter about anything else. And we need you to come be a part of this. Now, if you find yourself in any one of those ruts where you're running on empty, and you find yourself where you're really just having a hard time to figure things out and you don't know what to do, let me tell you this, the fastest way to get yourself out of a rut is to help another person, period. Now, while that's a really nice idea, a lot of us have a really hard time figuring out how to help, what to do, where to go, how do we figure this out? We have such an organization of helping people, not only in our community, but helping each other. We can help you figure that out. Now, if you're gonna have a distant relationship with St. Matthew's or any other church you, you might attend regularly, you're never gonna figure this out. You gotta be all in. You gotta jump in with bo both feet till you're in over your head. You gotta go all the way. That's the only way this works. If it's a, well, I'll think about God on Sunday morning for an hour. Really, that's a nice thought, but it's not gonna help you a whole lot. You're still gonna be looking. You're still gonna be trying to fill that. You gotta go all the way. And we're inviting you this Easter Sunday to make a new commitment to God and come be a part of this community. We're starting a sermon series today start called Running on Empty, and we want you to come and hear the whole thing. It's going to run for four weeks. On April 21st, we have Bring a Friend Sunday. We want you to think about the people in your life, your neighbors, your coworkers, the people that, that you, you can see that they're running on empty and they need to be a part of this. And let me be clear about something. We're not doing this because we want anything from you. We're doing this because we want everything for you. This is about you and a life transformation where your heart is filled and you have a relationship with God to the point where it's overflowing. That's what this is about. It's not about anything else. We are on a mission in this church to change Sterling and the surrounding area so that people actually understand that there are Christians in this world who love them and will accept them just the way they are and that there is a place where they are welcome. Mahatma Gandhi, when he was asked once if he was a Christian, he said, you know what? I love Jesus, but those Christians are so unlike their Christ. What if there was a place where that just wasn't true? And it was a place where people are happy to be together. People can sit squished up next to each other on Easter Sunday <laughs> and not really have a big problem with it. But it's really okay. And you can sit shoulder to shoulder next to a complete stranger and just be so happy to be there because we are so happy you're here. We all get to a point where we're running on empty at some point in our life. And as soon as we understand that what we are, we are really lacking in our life is, is a deep and abiding relationship with the risen Christ, that's when our life will change. Today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And while that is a wonderful thing, and it gives us hope for the future, and we think about heaven, and oh, this is glorious, and all that is good. Let me be clear about something. This is not just about the future. This is about right now. We were baptized into his death. We are raised in his resurrection. We say that in our baptism every single time. Our resurrection is now. It is a, it is a resurrection that is available to each and every one of us starting today. So if you're in that rut, 
Commit. If you're not from here and you're visiting family for Easter, go home and find a church. Find a good one. (laughs) This is a great place. We do more in this parish for each other and for our surrounding community, not only than any other church I've ever been a part of, but any church I've ever heard of. And any of you who know the extent to what we, of what we do here know that I'm telling you the truth. The more help we can get to spread this message, it's a very simple message. God loves you. There are no exceptions. The more people can be welcomed into this community and have their hearts and their souls and that feeling in the pit of their stomach absolutely filled for the first time in their life. They can feel that resurrection experience and understand that new life to which God is constantly calling us. This is Resurrection Sunday, not just Jesus's, yours. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, which is page 361, again in the Maroon Book, page 361. We do invite all baptized Christians to join us at the Lord's Table. We do believe that this is the Lord's Table and not the domain of any particular church or denomination. If you've never received in an Episcopal church, we ask you to come forward, place one in hand on top of the other, and someone will place a wafer in your hand, which you can then either consume directly You can dip in a cup of wine. The fancy word for that is intinct. Uh, If you consume the wafer directly, you can also drink from the main chalice. If you choose to do that, we ask you simply take the bottom of the chalice, tip it towards your lips so that we actually know you got some wine, because sometimes it's hard for us to tell. If for medical reasons or some other reason you uh, only want to receive uh, the bread and not the wine, you simply cross your arms across your chest and the chalice bearer will skip you by. If you're not sure what you believe about God, or even if you believe in God at all, but you simply want to come forth in the solidarity of one human family, come down to the altar rail, cross your arms, and we'll simply uh, ask uh, God to bless you in whatever way you're able to receive that. So uh, know that that invitation is there as well. And then finally, because we do have such a short altar rail and we have so many people, we're going to do one communion station here, and we're going to do another communion station in the back. So uh, 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 three of us will head to the back there, and the folks towards the back, you can receive communion back there instead of coming up to here, okay? So let's continue, page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voice with angels and dark angels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, 
to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God before the people of God. Think of remembrance that Christ died for you. Give them in your heart by faith for thanksgiving.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Jesus.